Hello, this is Professor Scott Norman, and this is our uh, third uh, set of uh, videos that we've done on the uh, rebuilding of the uh, rear brakes on a 1957 Dodge truck with a full floating axle. Uh, today we're going to uh, put the brakes back together again, and we are going to uh, bleed the brakes. Okay, now that we've got the wheel cylinder all uh, rebuilt, uh, we're going to go ahead and start working on uh, getting the brakes all put back on. Um, uh, one of the things that you want to make sure that you do is uh, clean up the uh, anchor pin area a little bit because the, uh, the shoes will move a little bit on that, but also these uh, flats where the shoes rise against, right in that area there. You want to make sure those are cleaned up too a little bit because the shoes are going to ride in that flat area right there, and so um, we'll make sure they're clean. In fact, it's actually okay to put a little bit of um, grease in there, uh, wheel bearing grease. So you could go ahead and just put a little bit there. A little bit on each of those something just just to help them move back and forth so the shoes not returning to its original position after you let your foot off the brake and it's dragging a little bit this will help out but you don't want too much because that's going to attract brake dust too so you keep grease to the minimum in the brake area okay so when i am looking at putting brakes back together again. I'm always going to look at the shoes that I have, and I have uh, two sets of shoes, a front and a rear, and so if you take a look at this, um, they have one shoe that uh, is longer than the other one. So this is a, a dual servo uh, brake system, um, which you know, that they're still using that in uh, modern uh, vehicles, if they do have drum brakes. But um, uh, the, the short shoe here, the one on the right, that's the short shoe, that's the primary shoe, that's going to go on the front. And the secondary shoe, which is the longer shoe, is going to be the one that goes on the rear. And I'll explain why that is once it's all back together again, as far as so we can see how this uh, dual system works. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the, um, put, I'm going to go with the secondary shoe, the rear one in first. And so I'm going to, going to, I got new anchor pins. So I like getting new anchor pins every time because I've had taken a couple brake assemblies apart where the pins have fallen off or, um, the springs have fallen off and it gets jammed up in there and that's not good. So I'm first going to get it where I have as much of that pin sticking out as I can and it's fairly straight. The springs, this has um, two retainers on it that goes on the inside and the outside of the spring and I'm trying to do this all with one hand, but I'm going to stick it on, get it to the first retainer which is on the inside and then I'm gonna put this one on and try to get it lined up is what I try to do there you go so it gets lined up then I use this guy right here to push turn in a quarter turn should stay on and then at that point I just leave it right there because I have to put everything else on first and so that was the easy one because that was my right side over on the other side like that, if I tried using my left hand for that, it may be a little bit more awkward. And the video may not show up really good by doing it because my body may be in the way. Uh, working in my um, my garage, I don't have a lot of room like I do at, at school with the big shop. But again, I'm going to put the anchor pin in first. And when I do that, I'm going to hold the anchor pin. I always am holding it with my thumb on the back. I guess if one of my kids is here, like I say, hey, here, hold that, hold that in for me. But since I'm by myself, again, I get it in there. See, it normally sits up like this here is where it sits. The shoe sits right in here like this. Well, I don't have a lot of space right there. So this, the, the trick is, is to get it <laughs> where you get the most of it in. So I got it back like, real far right now. And I also have it straight. You don't see how this pin is kind of off on an angle. You want it to be somewhat straight and as much of it in there, there we go. Much of it as you can, and you want it fairly straight. So. We'll see if I can do this left-handed. I'm gonna put the uh, the first retainer on. Then my spring, and you see how I got my finger on the back of it. I got my thumb right there, so I'll end up putting this guy here on. And I can I could almost get it on with my fingers, but kind of hard, awkward position here. Get my thumb off of there. Push it on. Well, I can see the problem. I can tell that my pin is, it's, it's not straight. It's, yep, there we go. It's, it's got it going. I just got to push it just a little bit. Okay. 
Uh, see, I'm using my left hand. I can tell. Oh, there it went. Left hand's not as coordinated as the right hand. At that point, now you got the shoes on. Now the shoes are on, you can start working on getting all the other hardware on. So, one of the things I'm going to put on first is that these little pins that are connecting from the, uh, the piston to the shoe. And so, something you check ahead of time is making sure that those fit in good. Sometimes they'll get they'll get smashed or something like that right there. They won't fit in. And so, so you want to make sure that they get in. So I'm going to push a little bit on this guy here. Pushes the piston in. Careful it doesn't pop this guy here out. And I can take over here and... Sometimes if I can't push it, I can just tap just a little bit. Just do a little tap. Tap, 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 tap. tap. The piston is just pushing it a little bit against that spring. And right now, that's all I need to do is just put it right there. I can take it and get it, get it closer to where it needs to go. See how it's pushed back a little bit? That's because the return spring's not on it right. But that's okay. That's good enough for right now. So on the other side, again, you got your other um, uh, pin that goes from, the, again, the piston of the um, wheel cylinder to the um, secondary shoe. So again, make sure those fit. Make sure those aren't smashed or anything like that. So that's good. Um, so I'm going to probably put it in first in the wheel cylinder. I can see it need to go a little bit further. So I'm just going to tap on it a little bit. And that's going to push the piston in a little bit. There's some spring in there. Enough for me to pull this back a little bit. Get it lined up. There it goes. Get it off. Okay. Next thing that we need to do is we need to put the, um, the return springs in. The return springs on this unit are exactly the same. So they're the exact same design. I cleaned everything up, all the hardware up. I didn't, I didn't replace any of the hardware stuff with the return springs because I couldn't easy get it. Uh, the uh, hardware carts weren't available. Um, I had a hard time matching up the springs and these springs look pretty good. So uh, um, uh, what I worry about with these springs is that uh, if the brakes ever got hot, anytime you have a spring and something gets hot, it loses its tension. And so I wanted to make sure they have it. So from um, typically what I'll do, oh, oh, I need to make sure I, before, before I put that spring on, I need to make sure I put my uh, anchor pin retainer, goes right in there, so that goes in there. Sometimes I'll tap that on just a little bit. A little bit of rust or something in there. Okay, so what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna first put in a small pin right in that hole. And I always do the secondary side. Um, uh, really, I should do the primary side first because the secondary side normally has um, some type of uh, parking brake uh, material, a uh, retainer or something like that. You just have to be careful. On, on a modern brake, you have, you, have, uh, you have something right in here, a parking brake lever is what you have right inside there. And you have uh, a cable coming out here for a parking brake um, uh, mechanism. And we don't have any of that on this vehicle. So, so really, it, it doesn't matter. But um, I do one or the other first, but let's do um, primary side first. And so I'm gonna put it up. I'll get my little fancy two here that goes on there. I'm gonna get my pit, my shoe all the way in, and I just try to slide that thing, let it slide forward. It should go by itself at some point. I'm gonna go try to, I'm gonna try not to get my thumb, <laughs> my thumb smash. And then on there again, I'm going with my left hand. So we'll see how this works. I'm not in front of it like I normally am for video purposes. There it goes. Okay, once it's in, you kind of rotate it. I want to make sure that goes fully around. And it does. And I see how nice and tight that, um, that primary shoe is now on the anchor pin. Make sure, sometimes I want to make sure it's pushed back all the way. So we'll take it in. Make sure it's pushed back because I have a, have a room for another spring on there. I'm going to make sure it's all the way around. So now my other spring, do it the same way. I'm going to put it in here, but that's not going to go right there. And um, use a fancy brake tool. 
this here. Again, you see how it has this little edge on it? The little edge right there is going to grab right there on that pin and use it as a fulcrum. Sometimes I have to make sure it doesn't slide off. Spring is moving by itself. There you go. Sometimes I'll grab a pair of pliers and I'll, if I don't like the way that spring is setting, I'll pull it down a little bit and move it around. If it doesn't come around all the way, it comes around pretty good, but sometimes that spring will stick all the way up, which is not good. So, you get her pliers to bring it down closer. So it's wrapped around there more. Okay, but now the top of it's all together. And the next thing to do is put the bottom of it together. And uh, you have to get a return spring and you have to get the star adjuster in. And so um, some people will put the spring in first and then the star adjuster. Some will put the star adjuster in and then put the spring in. And uh, I put the spring in first and I'll talk about why as I go through it. But um, the spring is pretty stout. So uh, uh, you're going to want to get it on and on this particular one it doesn't matter which way it goes because it's a symmetrical so it could go one way or the other way. So that doesn't matter. But I am going to put the, um, the side that goes in the back in first. Right off my pliers because it's, it's going to be a hard spring to pull. And pull and get it right in there. Now that was pretty easy. The reason why it was pretty easy is because I did not have my adjuster in. <laughs> okay, so so when I put my adjuster in, a couple things I have to worry about is that I have to look at where my hole in the uh, backing plate is to, to adjust it. And so it's over uh, by the primary side of the shoe. And so I want to make sure that I um, put the adjuster in where the star wheel is, is lined up with that hole, not the other way around, because that could be bad. Number two is that I kind of want to have an idea of where this adjuster is as far as um, when I took it apart. Because I didn't replace my um, shoes, and so I, the adjustment should be very, very close. I don't want it too wide, or, or, or I'll, I'll never get my uh, brake drum back on again. So I'm looking in, and sometimes I'll count the uh, threads. By counting the threads, I'll have a general idea. But the, the issue is, is that um, I need to lubricate this. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of wheel bearing grease. I'm going to put a little bit of wheel bearing grease. I'm going to put it on this, this button, we call that button there on that and that because you don't want that button to, to stick on you and so I want that nice and lubricated there that's one thing to lubricate and the other thing to lubricate is these threads because if these things because I for this one in particular it's not self-adjusting I have to adjust it so if I don't go in here and adjust this every once in a while it's very likely that these star adjusters will uh, seize up after <laughs> sitting there for one year five years ten years however long the um, person doesn't adjust it and so Put a little bit of um, grease on there and then put this back where I need to go. Approximately where it, and what, in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it all the way in because that's going to make it easier to install. Also, if you take a look at all that, um, all that grease on the outside of that, I want to kind of get all that grease off of there because any grease that's exposed will attract uh, brake dust. And we don't want brake dust on there. So I kind of clean up all that stuff okay so the next part of this is going to be to um, install the star wheel which is going to be really rough because now there's a big old tight spring that is stopping me from um, putting it in and so there's a couple of ways to do this and, and the reason why i like to put the star star wheel in last is because i could get in there with a the pry bar and i could move these i could pry against one of these bolts come in here and i could pry against one of these bolts in order to move these uh, shoes out and trying to get this guy in here. And so um, we take a little bit of experimentation as far as which side goes in easiest, but I'm gonna move some of my tools out of the way. I'm gonna have to get in here. I'm gonna put this guy, the primary side in first, and make sure he goes in all the way. Okay, and then I take a pry bar, get up in here on a bolt, and pry this guy open. And there we go. Now he wasn't that bad. The reason why he wasn't bad is because that's not the original star wheel adjuster for this particular vehicle. But it will work. Okay. The other thing that I'm going to want to do now is I'm going to want to try to get this 
star wheel in a, the approximate position where I need to go. And so um, I need to start adjusting it. And with the star wheels, uh, I adjusted. This actually had a um, uh, an L on it for the left hand side. Some will have an R, uh, R on it for the right hand side. But uh, on the back of it, the back has to go down in order to adjust it. So when I adjust it, once it's on the uh, car, I'm going to adjust it where I need to move the um, the back of the star wheel down. That's what that is. I'm looking for my screwdriver. So you know, you can get back in here and you get in here, and you can see that if I get in here and see that. In the back of it, I'm moving the back down. And by moving the back down, it's coming out. And I don't want to go out too far. I won't be able to get my um, my uh, drum in. But I don't want to have to do this one little tooth at a time. <laughs> so the key is you want to try to get it similar to where it goes. And so see the spring. The spring should touch the star wheel to stop it from rotating automatically, which it does. And so even though this isn't the right star wheel, it will work, it does fit, and the spring does touch it. So, so Professor Norman says it will work. So, apparently that's probably a good spot to start. Then when I get the, uh, the drum on, I'll do the final adjustment on it. Again, I don't want it super tight. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about dual servo. So again, this guy has an anchor pin up on top, the bottom of it, you see how the bottom is floating. And so this wheel is gonna rotate in this direction right here. It's gonna rotate in a counterclockwise direction because I'm on the left-hand side of the vehicle. And so what happens is that when I start um, applying my brakes, the primary brake shoe is gonna come out. The primary brake shoe is gonna grab that rotating mass of the, um, of the wheel. Uh, of, the, of the brake drum and we're going to use that rotating mass of the tire and the brake drum and going down the road to grab grab this and, and that and, and that rotational mass is going to push down on this um, primary shoe and it's going to pivot and it's going to push the um, the secondary shoe into the drum so we're using they call that a servo motion so we're just using free energy we're going to call that in order to uh, brake and so um, so uh, the car is going to break much better going forward because it has a lot bigger shoe. They call it a, a dual servo system because it also works going backwards. If I go backwards and the wheel is rotating clockwise as I'm going backwards, well, the secondary shoe is going to go and it's going to hit first. It's going to contact the drum. That rotational mass is going to then shove the, um, the, um, uh, the whole entire uh, primary shoe into the drum, which is going to cause it to stop. Uh, one of the, um, the surefire signs that you have your primary and your secondary shoe reversed is that the car brakes better going backwards than it does going forward. Uh, this is also good to know in case you're on the boat dock and you apply your, uh, your brakes and you don't want your uh, car to go into the, um, the lake. Uh, obviously, you want to make sure that uh, the brakes are working right, but just your brakes aren't as efficient uh, going forward than going backwards. Just a way of the dual servo setup works. Something I wanted to note on this is that, um, as I was going back together again, if you notice, uh, my rivets uh, right here popped off on my secondary shoe. So, uh, so I should probably look at getting new uh, 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 brake shoes for this particular unit. But if you think about it, since it, as if I'm going forward in the rotational mass of the drum, you know, probably this is the best spot for it to come apart because if it was. Um, because if it was coming apart here, I'd be afraid that it would try to tear apart as it was applied. But since it's on the uh, trading edge of the brake shoe, as the wheel is rotating while going forward, I'm not so worried about it right now. I may give it a try and just see what happens. I may drive it for, um, you know, maybe 100 miles or so, take it apart and see what it does. That depends on how easy it is to get brake shoes. If I can store the brake shoes and they're here in two days, then it's easy for me just to swap them out right now. But I, I put it together just so you guys can see how to go through it on a, uh, on a on a regular setup. So the next step at this point in time is to uh, bleed the brakes because I need to bleed these uh, wheel cylinders since they were rebuilt. Uh, my drums are uh, at um, uh, getting um, getting uh, bead blasted and then powder coated. And so once the uh, drums get back, then we'll talk about how to uh, set up uh, the bearings on these.
Okay, we got the um, the drum brake all back together again, and now we're going to be ready to uh, to bleed the brakes. You have to be careful with uh, bleeding the brakes without the um, the drum on, because if the, um, if, the, if the if the shoes come out too far, um, uh, the uh, the uh, the wheel cylinder will uh, uh, the piston will pop out, which is very bad. So I have a helper in my um, in my car, um, and so a helper, could you um, just pump the uh, pedal lightly, just a little bit? And I'm going to see if the um, if these brakes move. So just kind of go up. Oh, there you go. So now the you saw that the secondary one moved. Okay, oh, don't go too far. Okay, and go ahead and pump it again. There it goes. Okay, stop. That's good. That's good. I wanted to make sure that both the uh, primary and secondary were moving, and they are. So that's good. And again, they have <laughs> no limit. So again, if you slam on your brake real hard right now. Uh, the um, the wheel cylinders um, uh, can uh, pop out, which is bad. So go ahead and pop them up a couple more times. Just yep, this just yep, 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 that's good. Yep, just a couple more times. Yep, up, stop, 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 stop. And okay, and so then you're gonna hold the hold hold the pedal. So do you have it help? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I have a hose on my bleeder valve right here, and so I'm gonna open up the bleeder screw just a little bit. Okay, and brake fluid's coming out. Did the pedal go down to the floor? Uh, if you wanted to. Yeah, did it, did it drop down a little bit? Yeah. Good. Okay, go ahead and now pump it up now three more times. My wife's helping me out, so. <laughs> and let me know, let me know when you're finished. Oh, I did three times. Okay, is it, is it held down? Am I holding it down? Yes. yes. Okay, so we're going to open it up again. Look, fluid's coming out. Good, good, good. Close it again. Go ahead and pump again, please. So if you're um, uh, working with somebody who has never uh, bled brakes before, you got to make sure you give them clear instructions. And are you holding? Yes. Okay, let's try it again. I see fluid coming out. Good, good, good. It's clear fluid. I don't see any air or anything in it. And is the pedal dropping when I do that? Yeah. Okay, go ahead and pump them up a couple more times. See, yep, see them move. Okay, now these are very small master cylinders, so you should probably only open up that bleeder screw a few times, and then you're gonna want to go back and um, and check the bleeder, or sorry, check the master cylinder, make sure that it doesn't bleed dry. Because if you bleed the master cylinder dry, then you got to start all over again by bleeding from the master cylinder. All the way to the wheel cylinders. Right now, I'm just bleeding, bleeding the wheel cylinders, so so it shouldn't use a lot of fluid. But while I'm in here, I tend to um, put a couple uh, of pints of uh, brake fluid through the system uh, because the brake fluid's been in the car for a while. Uh, you know, these old systems are uh, vented to the atmosphere, so uh, so uh, moisture gets in the brake fluid. So it's a good idea to to, to bleed your brake fluid or to flush your brake fluid out um, every once in a while and. And bleeding a wheel cylinder is a perfect opportunity to do that. Okay, I wanted to show you guys uh, why you bleed the brakes uh, after you put the drum on. And so um, I made a good rookie mistake. So um, hopefully you guys can learn from this and my uh, students um, could learn from this too. And I knew better, but you know, my drums, um, they're being powder coated right now. And so um, I had the time and I figured, well, I'll just bleed the brakes and I just won't try to bleed them. I mean, I, I won't put a lot of pressure in there. Well, my helper was uh, pumping the brake pedal and they were pushing on it really hard. And um, luckily I wasn't standing over here, but as they were pumping it up, you can see right here, um, this uh, this uh, secondary shoe came out too far and uh, the seal popped out on it. And so it's actually uh, not a big deal. I'm just gonna put it back in and just made a little mess. Luckily I wasn't right here or anything like that. But again, the reason why you wait to bleed the brakes until after everything's all together is uh, something like this may happen. And again, I, I knew that you had to wait, but again, in my uh, hurry of I had some time today, I wanted to at least try to get work some of the air out of the system. Um, I blew out a cylinder. So um, let this be a lesson for you. We all make mistakes, right? So hopefully we learn from uh, somebody else's mistake and not our own. Okay, so we got the... Um, Got the wheel center all back together again and clean it up a little bit. Um, and now we're gonna bleed this out again. And so if you notice, if you look what I did now, I put a, um, a wood clamp on, on the both sides 
so uh, again, <laughs> so if I'm not paying attention to it, you know, and if someone pushes the brake pedal down too hard or pumps it too many times, um, there's no chance now for the um, for the pistons to um, to come out. So maybe a good practice for now on if you're ever doing a bleeding the brake um, without the drum on. Hello, this is Professor Scott Manomi. I hope you enjoyed the video. The next video we're going to do in this series is going to be reinstalling the drum brakes with the bearings and adjusting those bearings on this uh, full floating axle. If you're looking for more automotive educational videos, please subscribe to my Professor Pintane YouTube channel. Thank you very much. Have a good day.